Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating a two-piece wall sconce set which will make a beautiful accent statement piece for your home. Now these were created using the one garden fence section from the Dollar Tree and five gallon stir sticks for the wood. Now I have a weathered finish to my wood but they can also be customized in a stained finish as well. Now for your convenience, I've provided the complete list of supplies and tools that I used to make this project in the description box below. Now I'm so very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hey hey and welcome back to my fantastic subscribers and visitors to my channel. If you are a new visitor to my channel today and love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new a DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's just jump right into the project. Now for this project, we're going to need one of these garden fence sections from the Dollar Tree. We're going to need three packs of the five gallon wood paint stir sticks that were 98 cents from Lowe's. We'll need one small picture frame stand and these are sold in multiples from Dollar Tree. And we'll need two votive holders or jars of your choice. So I'm going to start with those five gallon paint stir sticks. I'm going to remove one stick and then cut all the rest down to size. Now I ended up cutting my sticks down to 15 inches. So now what we're going to do, make sure all your sticks are unpackaged and bundle them in sets of four. Now you'll notice that one side has numbers and the other side is blank. Now this won't really matter if you're painting them, but if you're staining them, make sure your numbered sides are on the back. So I'm using one of these carpenter squares from the Dollar Tree to make sure everything is lined up and perfect. And then I'm going to use those cut off ends of those paint stir sticks to bond these together. Now I'm going to start by bonding them with my Sure Bonder wood stick hot glue and I'm going to apply it to one of the sticks and I'm going to place it at the top of the back of the piece and then I'm going to adhere that bottom piece in place as well and then finally I'm going to take that last stick and I'm going to bond that in the center so now we'll have one solid wood plank to work with now I'm just going to repeat this process for the other four sticks and here are my two wood planks done. So now we're going to paint the wood planks and I'm gonna be using this white chalk paint. Now you can stain as well, but I just wanted to have mine in a white chalk paint finish. So I'm adding the chalk paint to the wood and then I'm gonna apply it all over the front and the sides of the piece. And here is one covered and we just wanna make sure we do the same for the second one. And once they're both covered, just let them sit to the side to completely dry. Now while those dry, we'll start working on the fence section. Now I'm going to start by removing all the tags and I want to remove those stakes first. Now I like to use my scissors, but you can also use some wire cutters as well. And sometimes I'll use those for some small uh, parts. Now I have had a lot of questions about what scissors I use and these are called craft gear. And I got these from Ross a few years ago. So I'm just going to cut off those stakes at the bottom first. And then I want to remove those side pieces. Now, since these are really small, I'm using my small wire clippers just to snip those off as well. And I'm going to snip them off on both sides of the fence piece. And now they're both removed. So now what I want to do is I want to cut these into four different sections and I'm just going to use my scissors for this. Now the key to this is just to take your time, go slow and make sure everything is even as you cut. So we're going to cut apart until we have the four separate sections as shown here. So now grab one of those sections and we are going to cut this bottom part off. So I'm just taking my ruler and I want to measure down to about three inches from that bottom piece. Now this will be my cut line. So I'm going to cut that first and then separate it on each side as well. And here is one of the pieces. Now in order to make sure that same size is transferred, I'm just laying it on top of all of my other pieces to make sure I get that same cut. And you'll end up with four of these tops and four of these bottoms. So now you're going to take those four bottoms. Now we don't need this extra piece here. So we're going to cut this off on all of our pieces as well. And now that those are all cut, we're going to do the same thing for the top pieces. We're going to cut off those extra side pieces as shown here. And 
And now all of our top pieces are cut and ready to go. So I'm gonna lay down my Sherbonder silicone mat because we are going to assemble our iron piece. So I'm taking two bottom pieces and I am gonna flip them over with a good side down and I wanna butt up those two flat ends together. Now all I'm gonna do is run a bead of my hot glue along that seam. You wanna make sure you press the two pieces together because you do not want that hot glue running to the other side. Add a little bit extra to each end crossing over and you want this to completely dry. And here it is all dried and we can go ahead and flip it over and continue working on our project. Now for each side, we're gonna add one of these top pieces as shown here. Now we're just gonna overlap it on the top. Now, originally I cut these two end pieces to an angle like an arrow, but it's really not necessary. I thought these were gonna be showing at the beginning of my project, but I ended up covering them with another idea. <laughs> so you can leave those straight as possible, but this is how they will be lined up. You just wanna make sure the ends of the swirls are touching. So what we're gonna do to connect this is we're gonna run a bead of hot glue on each end of that middle piece. Now this is adding some additional height because there is a little groove in here. So we're gonna add some hot glue in that groove and this will just fill in that extra voided space so we can actually connect the bond. Now we're just gonna let this uh, sit to solidify. Now once all of that has, has uh, hardened, we are going to go ahead and add hot glue to on top of our existing glue. Now this should actually make contact with the other piece. We're gonna lay it on top, make sure it's lined up and make sure those swirls are touching. And we're gonna do this on each side. And here's what one of our pieces will look like. So now we're just gonna repeat the process for a second piece. And now both of our pieces are finished. Now we did do a lot of cutting, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply a layer of flat black spray paint by Krylon to cover all of my imperfections. Now while that dries, our, we're gonna work on our wood planks because they should be dry now. So I'm gonna mix some nutmeg brown and some black paint together to get a nice chocolatey brown color. And what I wanna do with this is add a little bit of distressing around the frame. So once you get the color that you're happy with, you wanna go ahead with a small paintbrush and just kinda just drag it along the edge really randomly. I mean, when you're working with um, weathered and wear, it's usually just really random. So you just, I'm going around the edges and making it look like like weather and chipping. So here is one completely done and I'm gonna repeat this process for a second one and now I'm gonna let those dry. So by this time, both pieces are now dry after sitting and we can start to put it together. So I'm just gonna sit one of the iron pieces on top of each one of the wood pieces. Now, if you have any little overlapping as shown here, you can easily just cut that down so it doesn't overlap and it fits well on top of the board. Now I did wanna have some extra security, so I am gonna use some half inch brad nails in these iron pieces to the board, and this is just for extra security to make sure it stays in place. Now I am initially going to adhere these with hot glue, and I'm just gonna run it down that center seam along the back, and I wanna place it on the board and make sure it's even between the two ends, and this just provides that initial bond. Now you wanna repeat this for your other fence section on your other board as well. And now I'm using my needle-nose pliers to hold those tiny little nails and I'm gonna apply them as shown here. I'm just gonna nail one in each one of the ends of the iron piece, making sure, making sure it goes down into the board. And here is one fully applied. And then once both boards are applied, we are good to go. So now I'm going to work on my, my picture frame holder. Now this is sold in Dollar Tree in the picture frame section and I'm just going to use some wire clippers just to snip that little hinge so both pieces will come apart and then use my wire clippers again to remove that hinge from the back so it's nice and smooth. And now both of your hinge pieces are gone so you can use these in your project. Now before I add those hinges, I am gonna add my picture hangers and all I'm gonna use is some jute twine with knots tied on each end. I'm just gonna lay it across that first stick and then add two staples at each end and this will be sufficient enough to hold up your item. Now you can add more staples if you like or use metal clips if you have them on hand. 
So now we can add our hangers to our sconces. So I'm gonna lay the back side. You wanna make sure it's right side up. And then you wanna lay the back side of that little picture hanger on your frame. Now, if you look closely, you'll see some little dots on there. And these were the perfect guide to drill some holes. So I'll be able to strap these in. So I'm gonna drill one hole on each end of this side of the picture hanger with my drill. Now you just wanna make sure your drill bit is large enough for a strap to go through. So I'm just gonna go ahead with my drill. I'm gonna quickly drill two holes um, on each one of those hangers. Now, if you don't have a drill, you can use an X-Acto knife or wood burner to achieve the same thing. So now I'm going to actually take my sconce piece and I'm gonna lay one of those picture hangers on top and I'm gonna mark a hole on each side on my wood backing where that hole aligns up. And this way I'll have a way to strap my picture hanger through the back and then I'm just going to drill a hole on each side where those hole markings are so everything will be aligned and ready to go. And then I'm just gonna double check, making sure all my holes on my hanger and, and my uh, board line up. Now to initially secure this, I'm gonna add a piece of, or a little line of hot glue on the top and the bottom in the center, and then place that, that hanger right in the center and just press it into place. Now this is just to have initial hold and make sure it stays in place while we work on our strapping. Now I'll be using these zip ties that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Now these are 60 in a pack for a dollar. So I'm just gonna run one through the back hole. And then once I get it through the front, I'm gonna run it through the hole on my picture hanger, and then I'm gonna run it back through the back on the other side in the other hole we drilled. Now you may need your needle nose pliers to pull it through because I did drill my hole small. I didn't want a lot of play. Then you just connect that zip tie and secure it tightly in place and repeat this for the top. Now once everything is nice and tight, just go ahead and make sure that your hanger on the front is nice and secure and then snip those ends off your zip ties. And here is one completely done and it worked perfectly. And now you just wanna repeat the process for your other sconce. And here they both are, they are ready to go. So now I'm gonna take my two votive jars that I got from the Dollar Tree and I need to add a hanger. Now you can use jute twine, but I kind of wanna use something that was black in color. So I picked up this wire from the Dollar Tree. Now you can get this from the hardware section and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it around the lip of the jar and I'm gonna twist it around in a twisty tie. And then I'm gonna loop it around and I'm gonna actually use my sconce as a guide to see how long I want that loop and how far I want my jar to hang down. You just hold it in place with your thumb, wrap it around once and then clip that end. And then all we're gonna do is wrap that end around that strap that you have across the top and twist that in place as well. So now it's twisted on both sides and your hanger should be nice and secure. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and just make sure it's shaped nice, hang it on there, see what it looks like, and it's perfect. Now you just wanna repeat this for your second jar. So now you're ready to decorate and hang these. And here are my garden fence sconces, both hung up and on display. Now I really love this look. Now I've had so many requests for adding a candle holder to my garden fence DIYs, and these picture frame holders work perfect for this option. Now I added some rocks and succulents to my jars, but you can add flowers, fairy lights, or whatever you like. Now these holders are very sturdy, and it makes it possible for them to hold mason jars as well. And this wood chipping accent is very subtle, but it has that little extra rustic touch that I absolutely love. Now be sure to let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Craft DEE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit the little bell to be notified when my next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.